All right, guys, welcome back to The Real South Africa. We wanted to bring this interview back to you because so many people love this video. So we wanted to bring the part where Mark and Jay is sitting down, chopping it up, talking about African-Americans, tourism, the whole nine, and of course, South Africa. So stay tuned, you will enjoy. For those that are looking to relocate, we have a book you can purchase. Check it out on our website now. guys you're sitting with Mark Blanton and of course you're sitting with Jay from Maximum Impact and you know we're here in Durban having a good time I'm trying to show the man a good time I'm trying to show him hey this is how we do it down here in South Africa I'm trying to convince him that um, you know I, know, no, I, I need to move to South Africa no 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 no, no. I mean we, we you know we're not Ghana we're not uh, all these other places we just we just little South Africa down here Trying our best. I'm gonna get them to Ghana. All right? I'm, gonna get, <laughs> no, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get y'all to Kenya. I'm gonna get y'all to Ghana. We wanna go. We yeah, wanna yeah, go. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's gonna be hard to leave this South Africa. I'm just trying I'm to say. I'm just Nigeria. That's not. <laughs> yeah, I think I need. To, I need. To, I need to dash someone. I know, that's all I know about Nigeria. There's some dashing going on over there in in Nigeria. But now we were just talking about, like, I think you had mentioned something about why people don't come to Africa or something to that effect. Like, what's up with that? Well, I think it's the, the, the misperceptions. I think a lot of times it's just not knowing, mm -hmm. not knowing what is here. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, I didn't know what was here in Durban. Yeah, I didn't and I look at you. Yeah, I mean, it's, this, this is what I said. I said, this is like when I do my vacations, because people see me traveling all around and they yeah. think I'm on vacation, I'm really working. And yeah. so I'm working, but it's like when I'm I on vacation. <laughs> yeah, for real, I'm most of the time. trying to be like yeah, when I grow you up. You will, you will. I promise, I promise. I, 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 that's why I'm hanging out. You got to hang out with people who mm. doing what you want to mm. do. Mm. So, so it's like, I said, well, when I, when I landed, and you know, you, know when, you know what it's like to be on the grind. You know what, you've done that in your life. So yeah. when you land, I knew that I was going to unplug when I came to South Africa because when I knew you all had everything taken care of, so I didn't even yeah. have to worry about it. But I think for a lot of people, they don't know they can come to Africa and unplug. They don't know. Man, this is it. They, they don't know that all of what they're missing out on. So they're thinking, oh man, I'm gonna get kidnapped. Some bad's gonna happen mm -hmm. to me. They, you know, they're gonna. So Are you talking about DC? No, for I, real. Yeah, oh, but I, that's I, real. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. that's real. And you know, so, well, speaking about real, mm -hmm. like we're sitting here now. You know, of course, we're gonna date this video because. You know, we just had that, you know, that, that, those senseless murders in Buffalo. Yes, yes. And, and, you know, that happened right there in the U.S. Those things don't supposed to happen. Right, not in the U.S. Yeah, and a lot of the bad things, I mean, I'm here all the time. So I'm watching the news, I'm watching U.S. news. I, I, I watch some, you know, SABC news and, 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 of course, Newsroom Africa. I check those, those guys out because they like to, you know, have us on from time to time. Okay. Um, but it looks very dangerous from this side, you know, and especially, you know, you're looking at the, at the, at the, at, at the blacks mm -hmm. uh, or black people. And all I can say is, is that the whole time I'm thinking, why, 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 why aren't we in Africa? Why aren't we spending more time in Africa? You know, building these relationships with Africa's, I mean, to me, it only makes sense. And I only, and I'm, and I'm privileged, and you're privileged mm -hmm. because we keep coming here. Yeah. You know, on our own, nobody made us. Nobody made Nobody us. forced me. Um, and now that I'm here and you're here, it just only makes sense for us as, as a people. And like, if I had a choice, I'd be like, everybody, you know, you know, high school graduation, everybody come to South Africa. But that's or, real. Or come to Africa. Right, right, but that's real. Yeah. To get that exposure. You gotta have it. But, but the thing is, is that I realize that if more and more of us started seeing the options, mm -hmm it poses a different type of problem on an economic level for America because now you got all these people starting to come and see, wait a minute, I have options? You mean to tell me I don't have to work like a slave to barely get by? I can take the same money and I can work online, I can work remotely, I can go and 
I can do these different things. So I think a lot of people don't come because they don't know about yeah. the options. And then the narratives, you got to remember, for all of our lives, they were telling us that Africa was a bad place to come to. Yeah. You know? Or they would go find the worst situation <laughs> in you the know, worst they, area. They skip past all that beauty and skip past all Everything. that stuff. Basically, the stuff that they do and they go to, they don't want us to know about it, so they keep it away from you. Because when they get there, they don't want to see you there. Man, that's what I. That's what I. No, feel. no, no. That's real. I'm, I'm yeah. gonna tell you. I have traveled to 17 countries uh -huh. on this continent, and I see the same scenario everywhere. Everywhere I go. Uh -huh. Everywhere I go. Everywhere uh -huh. I go. I was in the Gambia. Uh -huh. That's a little tiny country right there in. in it's kind of like in, inserted in Senegal. Yeah. Same situation. I'm in. Uh, Kenya, yeah. same situation. I'm saying, now wait a minute. They told me this place was bad. But mm. I come here. I'm looking around. I said, wait a minute. And the people who are absent, mm -hmm. us. Yeah, and we the ones should be. We should be enjoying it the most. I I will say, and I'm just gonna say it. And you know, I know it might not be popular in the U.S., but it's a it's a fact here, and especially at SA, and I'm sure mm -hmm. in other parts of Africa, they always say the same thing. Where are the African Americans? Where are they? Like, why aren't they coming? Like. For them, it's like there's they, like there's no barrier keeping you from coming here. You know, they always reference like our passports. Our passports get us in places. Yeah, it does. Yeah, their passport here in South Africa don't get them hardly anywhere. Mm. So they they're here. So you know, you do have some you know under you know certain circumstances they get to come you know school and whatnot. But we could just come um, at any time, and they are totally shocked. Like they don't see any, and then when they do see us, they're so shocked. You know, you'll see us in Joburg, you might see, you know, it's like we're in Durban. So there's not a lot of African Americans just running around. No, no. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's very true. I don't see us running around. No, no, <laughs> no. I mean you'll be you'll be in Joburg and you you from from time to time run across somebody um, you know, who's American. But I would say like people like us, you know, who's doing the work mm -hmm. for our our people. Yeah. And you can say whatever you want, but it's for our people. Yeah. Because we found something, and we're like, "Hey, come over here, y'all. Let me let me show you." Yeah. And you know, it's it's going to be extremely hard. And, and, and maybe you can chat about this for a second. You know, people want to go to the places that you serve, that you spend a lot of time mm -hmm. setting up. <laughs> yeah. You spend a lot of time. You go and get staffs, and you get you find local people yeah. that's willing to assist. You do all these things. And you get somebody who wants to come to Ghana per se, right. or one of the other places that you that you go to, and then they want to do it themselves. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, they no, want to. No, for real, they want to do it themselves. That's fine. And then they get there, and then they want to have the same experience that you were talking about. Yeah. No. And they did only the only work they did was they went on the internet, and they found something. Mm -hmm. They don't know where these places are. They don't know. With the ratings, they don't know anything. I, I go through it. But you know, I, the thing that I, I tell people, especially when it comes to the maximum impact experience, yeah. the, I tell them up front, I'm not the cheapest. I'll never be the cheapest. Yeah. Because what I'm creating is an experience. Yeah. And so some people don't want to pay for it, the experience. They don't want to pay for knowing that they're going where they rest their head and mm -hmm. they're going to be comfortable. Yeah. The time you, you talk about the time and energy that goes into making sure the transportation is in order, making uh -huh. sure that their experience flows the way they want it to flow. So when that happens, um, they can call, but it's a fee. Uh -huh. You know, it's not going to be oh, because we're going to rescue you from you know trying to avoid. Yeah, you know, because it's a it's a lot of time and energy that goes into establishing relationships. Uh -huh. It's a lot of time and energy away from family, away, just being just being in yeah. these different places. And so what, and this is what I'm very confident about, and I see you doing it too, uh -huh. and I think that's why we click the way we do, is because, you know, we talk about black business, uh -huh. we talk about uplifting the community and all of that, but then when that time comes, we try to shortchange the community, try to tear it down, yeah, to, and then yeah. go, you know, try to blast it. And so for me, I said, Blast me all you want because mm -hmm. it, that's fine because you, you're not going to be able to blast me on the quality of what I bring. Yeah, and and it, it'll just be because you couldn't have your way, but it won't be because you know what he didn't do what he said he was going to do. It'll be, yeah. you, but but that that's something I see. Um, it's unfortunate, but you know what? There's so many other people who come 
and, and, and have the great experience. Yep, they come here and they actually submit to the to the scenario. I've had people that say, "This people, <laughs> oh, people are so funny." They say stuff like, um, "Yeah, I wanna I wanna climb the I wanna climb." Um, a table Mountain, okay. and then I, I wanna, I wanna go to the apartheid museum, and then I wanna, I wanna walk on the beaches in, in Durban. I'm like, you're talking about three different places, three major cities. They three have flights. Three different flights. They have zero, and, and I'm only gonna come for six days. And it's a, first of all, I would just tell you it's a waste of time. You need to s- yeah. select one, but the packages that we put together, mm-hmm. and I'm sure you do something very similar. The packages that we put together. Or put that way, put they're put that way for a reason. Yeah. And we put a lot of effort and energy to it. We 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 conversate with the people that are on ground, not on the internet. We talk to them and say, hey, it's going to take people three hours to do this. It's going to take people four hours yeah. to do this. This is this is, you know, six hours away. This is only thirty minutes away. So we know all these different things, and then we're familiar with the locations because we go. Yeah. You know, the hotel you're staying in, we stayed there. We, I know, we, we, I know. <laughs> that's why I'm with y'all. Like, you know, I'm saying that's why I'm here yeah. because I know what I'm getting. I know the quality. Yeah. Yeah. I have no problem paying for it because yeah. I know that when I come to South Africa, I don't want any, I'm, I'm like, you've already done the due diligence. It's done. You put the groundwork in. When I read the itinerary, I knew what to expect. I, it, but, but unfortunately, and, and, and I realize, you know, we, and we won't even stay on this very long. Yeah. Unfortunately, there are people who don't respect that. And they don't mm-hmm. respect that work that you put in. No. But, but you know what? As people are watching right now, and I'm telling you, as you're watching, you're making a consideration if you want to come to South Africa, they're going to make sure that you're taken care of. Last yeah. time I was on, I talked about being a client again. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I meant that because I know what it's like in this industry. I know how hard it is to coordinate, coordinate different things. When I came and I looked at how everything was laid out, I was like, I'm good. When I went to Lesotho yesterday, and I, I didn't even realize where I was going. You know, just yeah. that, you know, in my mind, when I got Another here- Another country inside of South Africa. Another country basically. inside of South Africa. I unplugged. Mm-hmm. When I got here, I said, I'm not, all I'm gonna do is just, when they tell me where to go, I'm gonna go, because that's how much confidence I have in what you all are doing here. Mm-hmm. And so when I got there, I was so, I mean, the views that I had going to the it. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. But if I was nickel and diamond, being cheap. You would never know any of these things. I, I, sometimes you got to pay for quality, pay for the experience, and just yeah. enjoy the ride. And I think that's what holds us back because many times in America, we've been trained to look for the cheap. We, we're going on a cheap carnival cruise. Yeah. We go, I'm sorry, I mean, to say call the people. Yeah, right. no, it's right. no, it is what it is. It is what it is. But, <laughs> but you know, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me add in there, you know, because, you know, I don't have no problem with people doing those types of things. If they want to, if, if yeah. you just come to South Africa, get the experience, great. But I promise you, 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 you know, I know I bought my mama here when, some years ago when she, when she was around, and I know that when you when you come in all this way and you're bringing your families all this way and you're bringing your mom which i think everybody should bring their moms if you can um and your, of course your dad if, if he's if he's around um but yeah come all this way you don't want to be disappointed no you know i then one day i was just, i was in joe bird and i saw you know i see people just like people see me and i saw this, this this brother and his wife they were older it was like in their, at least in the 60s maybe 70s and he had all his Pittsburgh hat on. He had a Pittsburgh oh, yeah, stuff. He had a ter- he, the yeah, towel he, and everything. Yeah, basically he had a terrible <laughs> towel. He was he had all this Pittsburgh. So I knew he was from America. And it was moving kind of slow. So I said, let me go park this car. And I actually caught, caught up to them. And I don't know the full story because Tasha had a story with, with, the, with the wife and I was talking to the gentleman. And he said, you know, we worked our whole lives. We just wanted to come to Africa. And um, he came. And but he didn't have a plan. Mm. He didn't know where he was going. Mm. He had zero clue where he was going. He was just trying to figure it out, you know. And that's stress at yeah. that point. Yeah, and then like with her, his wife, she had to sit down a lot. It was like, so, and I'm thinking in my mind, if she would have came with us, we would have made sure that her, you know, her situation would have been sorted. Everything would have been, been, been good for them from where they're eating to all the events mm. and all the stuff, but they chose to go to go that route. So then he's turned around asking me, well, how do we do this and how do we do that? And I'm like, so, and I under, you know, and, and you kind of mentioned it, us black people, we, we say on the cheap, but we don't do things properly. So you were here in my videos, 
I say do it proper. Come yeah, here proper. Absolutely. Come have your cars waiting for you. Have all your stuff. So when you come all this way, you ain't you ain't having you, you're not having a fuss. Because I'm gonna be honest with you. The like for example, you know, like people use Uber in the States. And don't say you can't use Uber here. Uber's here as well. But it's not the, it's not regulated the same. It's just not the same. So they have Uber, do they do have They Uber. do have Uber here, but it's not the same as it is in the States. Meaning that um, they have their own rules and have their own regulations and whatnot. So to the point to where I'm not saying, what I'm saying is, is that if you're going to have transportation and you want to be guaranteed and everything is good to go, if you're waiting on an Uber, you might actually be waiting on an Uber mm. for an extended period of time. And then... <laughs> I like how you put that in. Yeah, and you may be. Versus our stuff, you have a guy pops up. Um, he's, you know, in a nice vehicle. Yes. He's dressed yes. proper. Yes. Um, he's doing all the stuff. He's probably a guy. Um, he's going to be able to tell you along the way, hey, this is what you're looking at. Um, because I'm going to tell you, a lot, of our, a lot of us Americans, we go places and all we do is just looking for American stuff as we are mm -hmm. riding down the street. Okay. And so that's all we recognize and we don't realize that that building was this and that was that and this is this. So when you have that guide in a car and, they're, and they understand because you, 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 you're with us. Yeah, they, the brand is already set. Yeah, yeah. they know that educate our people on what they're seeing so when at the end they that's part of the experience that you're going to have and, and and i'm going to tell you you know when you talked about pricing i'm laughing because i remember years ago when i was like okay what does it cost to spend 10 days in south africa and the first thing you put in and there's some lots that pops up some lots somewhere in the bush they're great lodges, but you don't want to spend 10 days at a lodge i'm just telling you yeah it's black yeah, people I'm, 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 go I'm, I'm, see yeah. it Maybe spend a day two, you know, and then bounce. Yeah. Because um, you're gonna want to do what we're doing. Yeah. What you I agree. Do. I agree. Yeah. I so, agree. And, 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 but the prices are like ten thousand, twelve thousand. They're massively. They're, go look at a go online. Look it up. It's expensive to come there. So it just looks expensive. But then when you look at our packages, they're they're a third of it, and you're getting all of this. Hmm. So I was I would suggest I, I, I always say go to our uh, to our website. And whatnot, but but you do feel that most people should be like, you know what? Let me let me go to Africa. Well, here's the thing, people. This is what I learned. I was afraid to invest in myself, mm -hmm. so I would always cheat myself. I would always pull back. Let me see how I can do this for less. Let me see. Not that not that you shouldn't be frugal or wise with your money. Yeah. But I was afraid to spend money on me. For whatever reason, I think it's cultural conditioning. Yeah. Maybe I don't think I deserve it. I don't know. You know, we got a lot of stuff going yeah, on. We, yeah, yeah, just we a little bit. Of, we got a lot of stuff going on. So <laughs> I had to shift my mindset and say, I work hard and I'm gonna play just as hard. Mm -hmm. And why why shouldn't I come here and enjoy when I go to sleep, knowing that I don't have to deal with drama and all kind of stuff going on in the hotel? Yeah. Why why should I pull back from a dream trip? Yeah because I'm afraid to spend some money. Yeah. And, I, and I spent money on other stuff. Yeah. I'm wasting money on things that I, you know. Yeah. So now my philosophy is I'm gonna spend money and invest in me because I work hard. And I think for those of, who are watching right now, yeah. if you invest in yourself, you'll be so thankful in the end. And, and again, when, again, this is my second time with Real South Africa. Yeah. Being able to do that and knowing that you're supporting a black company in Africa, now we're taking this money and it's not just going all over the place. Now, mm -hmm. now we're bridging the gap. Now yeah. we're bringing, now you're having that opportunity. And I will tell you that coming here, it will do something, what it does, <laughs> like, like coming to South Africa, and, and I know a lot of people begin to explore, it yeah. unlocks something. You realize that, wait a minute, there's more to this world than the U.S. You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's just nice. It's but. just a piece. It's you know, I, I, I had to had to <laughs> jump in there because I'm like, you know, I was a, I was a soldier for a long time. Okay. So I, I I spent five years in Germany, but when I was in Germany, I got to drive everywhere. I went mm -hmm. everywhere, um, and I traveled a lot. So travel, you know, I, I actually came across the TV, came on TV just today. That it's like travel is like an education. Yes. It's a, it's an education that you can't get nowhere. And it was funny because I've always traveled, I always moved around, I always went places because I could. And it's funny how how impactful it is. Even your kids see it. And let me tell you why. My daughter, she she just turned 24, and she's doing her thing. And she said, I sent her off to, to, to Norfolk State, go to school, whatever. 
and she told me, she said, she said Daddy, I want to be, be a flight attendant. And I was like, flight attendant? Why do you want to be a flight attendant? She says, because, because when I was younger, you used to take us to all these different places, and I used to see the flight attendants and said, I want to do that. But then at the same time, she likes to, she loves to travel. So she figured she'd become a flight attendant. She, she gets travel. She travels. Get paid to travel. And get paid to travel. This girl be everywhere. My, my, currently, right now, she's in, she's in Venice. All right. She's in, she was like, you know what? Me and some of my travel agent friends we're, travel, me and my uh, flight attendant friends, we're going. So she is a flight attendant. She is a flight attendant. And so she's like, you know, and, and, and to her, she, she, she always looked at my travels. Like even when she was in school, I'd be like, oh, I'm here, I'm there, I'm there. A lot of it was because of, of my previous employment, but mm-hmm. some of it was my own, by my own, you know, hey, I bought a ticket and I yeah. went. And all I can say is that, you know, this traveling thing, you know, it, it makes me proud because I'm like, you know what, she's, she's learning about the world. She's right. learning. She's, she's becoming a different person with each experience. Yeah. She goes to Venice or wherever. She and, and yeah, and just to, just to spend that time. And yeah. now she would, she would go somewhere else and then she would go here. You know, she can go anywhere in the U.S. as she wants, but she, she travels. She, matter of fact, she was here two weeks before um, she went to Venice. She came, she said, let me go see my dad. So she came here and of course she's been here whew, seven, eight times. Okay. Yeah, seven, eight times. So uh, traveling, you know, bring your kids, you know, on your trips, on my trips, you know, bring people because I think the experience that you're going to get, I promise you, take them to Disney World. I've taken that same child to Disney, Disney World. Yeah, yeah, she never mentioned it ever since. <laughs> never, ever did. And that's way more expensive. It's expensive. You get a hot I dog with $10, $12. But that's the truth. Yeah. I think like, the day pass is like a hundred and something. Uh, some, some kind of. <laughs> so, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think I think what we're doing, um, you know, putting putting Africa on the map, um, giving people the opportunity to travel, and I think the last thing I want to cover in this segment here, or this I want to talk about, yes, yeah, this is what I want to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Is you know I, I I I you know we talked about different countries and whatnot, and I think we get polarized as black people because. For one, we do our we do our DNA thing, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, nothing wrong with that. Maybe I don't know, but he said maybe. You know, I, I, I don't know because I know they, they use DNA to do a lot of stuff. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, I mean, we we we've seen some of the experiments they do, um, which is fine. But you know, to find out where you may be from mm-hmm. or, or whatever the case may be, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go on the record to say that, and, and I'm glad you're here, that. People get polarized because they're like, I want to come to Africa, and then they do this. The next conversation is, I don't know where to go in Africa. Oh. I don't know. And so then they don't, so then another year go by, another so two years go even. by. And then they won't even go. But then in the meanwhile, they've been to Miami, they've been to New Orleans, they've been to New York, they've San been Fran. to San Fran, they've been here, they've been there. They never really? asked that same question. They didn't ask it like, where should I go? Oh, they no, did, no, no, no. They I'm just gonna, go. I'm going to take it even deeper. They'll okay. go to Paris. They'll yeah. go to London. Yeah. They'll go to all of those things. And, and they don't they ask no questions. questions. Well, well, Africa? Yeah. I don't know where to go. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I don't, I, okay, well, then I'm going to do my... So then I'm going to do my DNA test to find out with my people. Okay, now I know that. And then you walk around with your certificate. Uh-huh. You might even hang it on the wall for, for a few years. But you, at, at some point... It's like there's so many barriers that people that we put up, we put ourselves, and then just using the internet, just the conversation yeah. around where to go, what place is better. I don't give a damn. Like, they're all great, in my opinion. Yeah, I, they all I've great. I've been I'm, 17 yeah. of them, so I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I prefer South Africa. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm gonna get them to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 that's just me. But I I I I I, I think the same people. In South Africa, are in oh yeah, yeah Ghana yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in Angola, yes, and whatever we speak a little different languages. Some of them are tribal languages, and some of them are languages that were bestowed on them. Yes, per se bestowed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got you. I, I that's got why you. I speak like this, and I don't yeah, know. Why I speak like this too. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what my native language is supposed to be. It's sad, and, and I will admit that. But I'm glad that the people here accept me for uh, how I am, and I'm sure you got accepted. The same, same thing. Yeah, so people do accept you when you walk up in there. Oh, yeah, well, I, I'm going tell you where I get accepted the most. Nigeria. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> they think I'm from Nigeria. <laughs> but but I don't, I'll say this. I don't have a favorite yet because each place has its own, yeah. you know, it's like, so there's certain things that, like I love about South Africa. I love the the, the fight of the people. I love the story of South Africa because mm-hmm. it resonates 
with me and our story. Yeah. Um, I love the hospitality of South Africa. I love the amenities of South Africa because yeah. they're familiar, you know, so yeah. it, it, it resonates on that. And, and I had to be honest with myself to say, I appreciate those amenities. But then when I go to someplace like the Gambia, I keep talking about the Gambia. I don't, yeah, know, what's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's happening with the Gambia. Yeah, but, but I go to someplace like the, the Gambia and it resonates because it feels very organic. It feels, you know, I'm from the country too. Mm -hmm. South Carolina, I was born in Charleston. So mm -hmm. you know how country living is yeah. versus city living. So yeah. you know how sometimes you go back to the country and you're like, all right, it's the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, that's, so that's what I feel when I come here. But, but the thing is, is that if you just come and you just find wherever, some people, South Africa is where they need to start. That, yeah. That's the, yeah. for other people, maybe the Gambia is where you need to go. But not going at all is where yeah. I get concerned because all we know is America, and America is just it, a morph brother, of... I don't know what it is. It, it from, doesn't from, know what from, it is. From, yeah, from this perspective, and I mean perspective, I'm not saying I'm sitting here in Indianapolis talking about America, because that perspective, I'm too up close to it. I, I yeah. You know, everything's America, turn TV on. Everything, everything I do everything is American, do. so it's kind of hard to even have any discerning eye. Yeah. But when you step away from it, and you know, like my wife, you know, this is the first time living out of the country, and her view, her, her view has changed because now she's like, whoa, I, I, I can see America from, I can actually push it back and I can see America. And you know, there's still things that are super positive, but there's, then you start seeing all the, all the cruddy stuff yeah. Ooh, as, see, as, ooh, as well. Word, yeah, yeah, you, you see cruddy. it, you see it. And then I think for us, at least for me, my South African friends, they asked me some of the, 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 the simplest questions, but it makes sense because they, they asked me stuff because they, because over here, you know, obviously they have all their news. Like, we don't have any African news in America at all besides the, what they decide to tell us, which isn't the best. Yeah. Um, not saying things don't happen, but what, hap <laughs> what happens is eventually some CNN story will come out. And then it'll, it'll good, come out good here. Old, good old CNN. Yeah, and it'll come out here. And my South African friends be asking me all kind of stuff. Because culturally, it doesn't make any sense. Mm. Culturally. It just doesn't make any sense. And, and, and I'm not going to talk about bad things, but let me talk about one South African culture, which I think is something that we need to look at in America, uh, but, but our society doesn't really permit it. It's um, here in South Africa, they call it a black tax, right? A black tax. Uh -oh. No, it, it's, it's, you know, I can appreciate it. You know, even though some South Africans, they're like, man, it's this, this black tax thing. It's like a, it's, it, basically what it is is if, you know, you got your family, and you got these massive families over here. They're, they're, there's not like eight people, ten people. I'm talking about massive families. And if somebody, you know, that's you say go to Joe Berg, because a lot of people want to go to Joe Berg, mm -hmm. and they make it, and they're doing well for themselves, and, and they're, they're, you know, they got the job or whatever the case may be, then that means that you got to take care of your people behind you. Ah, you got to take care okay. of your family. Okay. It's, and it's, and I, I see people here struggling with it to a point to where it's like, ah. Oh, I gotta pay black tax. And it's not like they they say it like it's not a choice. Because hmm. it isn't. They actually take care, they 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 take care of there. So you can you can be here, like I'm used to wait till, but I can think of like most townships. On the weekends, you'd be seeing nice cars pulling up in them places. Them cars don't belong there and from an American perspective. But they're there because, you know, uh, you know, the brother don't came home, he's done well. Okay. He's come home, he I takes care of home. Takes care of Gogo, which is grandma. He takes care, you know, you know the uh, everybody. Okay, does what he can. That's a black tax. We don't do that in the states. We we make our money. That's our money. We do whatever we want to do with it. You don't get to tell me that I gotta take care of my cousins or help my help my brother, or help my sisters. I don't, you ain't gotta do that in the states. It's just a choice. Here, it's not really a choice. You just so kinda, that's something that that's something that you found that was uh, that inspired you. Here. Well, I, I feel that they have they have the culture. They have something that binds them Got to each other. Got it. Even though it might be unpleasant sometimes. Sometimes it's a good thing. I'm sure it feels good to be able to go back and help. Grandma yeah, go, yeah, go home and, yeah. And, and and build something or put yeah. something on or on our homestead. We're building another home, and you can contribute. I mean, it's, that makes me feel good. That would make me because you're building up your family. Yeah, your yeah, yeah. Exactly. So there's a lot of things that they do. Um, so, but and, but and, but part and parcel. I think I had a Nigerian uh, doctor. I met him at one of those places in Joburg. You run, you run across a lot of Africans from different places. I'm spots. saying Nigerians are everywhere. Yeah, anyway, he was happy to be sitting over there by himself. I'm like, hey, bro, what's up? And he's like, oh, I'm just, I said, no, man, come on. No, no, no. Come over here with us. 
And so it was us. It was right. just all of us. And it was some South Africans. It was us and him. And we were all talking. And it's weird. And let me tell you something, Americans. You know, it's not like all Africans know each other. Yeah, it's like, so true. Like, like they, they're, in that, in that particular conversation, they were learning about each other. Like, mm. you know, and then finding out that we're not that different. Like, even though the words might be different or they might eat something that's similar right. or whatever. So it's, it's, it's amazing that what you can learn by just coming here to Africa and not trying to separate yourself. Literally. Literally. get immerse yourself into the just, culture. Just show up, sit your butt down, That's right. and say, how you doing? You might not know how to say, you know, the African uh, I don't say because I know version. no language. And yeah, I mean, I know it's enough. Zulu language? Is yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's several. Okay. Oh, yeah, several. But you might not know, but that doesn't matter because for some odd reason, these colonizers, these colonizers showed up and taught the local people the language. We had colonizers in America that showed up, um, I, I would assume. We sure did. And we, we learned their language, that's and, so that. the, and that's how we're talking. So that's basically all I have, and all I can say is just, you know, um, come, come to Africa. Um, I know I said something about, uh, you know, coming on your own, but you, I would prefer that you come through somebody who's taking care of you. But if you, if you can just put $2 together and get here and, and, and land in Accra, and just walk around, and then get back on the plane and leave, then do that. You don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. But you know what I'm saying, but they need to get some experience. Yeah. But if, if somebody can do it, you know, for real, if, if you, this is my suggestion, so you don't go back to America and carry the narrative that has been pushed <laughs> on us, it would be wise mm. for you to go with a reputable yeah. company that can curate an experience for you so that when you go back and tell your family and friends, you've now had an experience that is, one, people, and, and, and the reason why I would recommend companies like what we do yeah. is because we know our culture. We know it better than, we than know they do. Us. We know us. Yeah. We know where people want to sleep. We know where they want to eat. We understand the dynamics. We know how we've been taught. We know mm. all of these different things. And so, my again, I know that if I went to a country, and even to this day, I still just don't show up in a country. Mm -hmm. Even with all of my travels around Africa, I still understand, you know what, let me make sure I have an understanding and let me sign up with someone reputable because I don't want to be tainted by my own misjudgment. Yes. <laughs> that was that 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 was thank you for correcting me in that regards. Cause I, I do agree with you that that like I said, people come here and then they have a bad experience and then they're like they go back to the States and they're like, Man, it is it messed up there. Yeah, like, you know, ain't going to Africa, man. No. Because I, because think about it, you can go in the US to like you know, go to all these different cities and every city has issues, massive issues. You know, we, I remember I was in Sacramento and they were they were talking about the housing problem and people were sleeping along the river and they had people in you. So I drove down there, me and my daughter, mm -hmm. we drove cause she's always traveling with me. She'd be rolling. And we drove down there just to see and it was just nothing but a, a river. Intense. And people had, they went to the, to the, to the, to the, to the sporting goods store, bought tents and they were just sleeping out there. Mm -hmm. And these are good people. Some people had cars and um, you know, cause it's so expensive. In Sacramento. It's, 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 it's Massively expensive. Yeah, California, that that, that it's too Silicon expensive. Valley is too expensive, yeah. and so people are like I, I, I'm, I don't know what to do. And, and and you would think you know most mostly black. No, it's mostly white people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and that's the that's the other part. That's just some of those other narratives. <laughs> <laughs> so we so we can go we go we go down a whole road. But, but to your point, and I think this is is so important. Just come, invest in yourself. Yeah. Come and see. I know that Mark and Natasha are going to take care of you. Yeah, we take care. I, I, I yeah, know it because we do what we can. This is the second time around. Y'all remember the old Shalomar song? So, oh, oh damn! <laughs> I know you date yourself yeah, again. Right, right, right. <laughs> Shalomar. <laughs> Took back on Shalomar. Yeah. Right? But but that's the deal. The how are you? Yeah, yeah, how are you? Jody Wiley and, uh, and yeah. the other guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but that, that's the thing. When when they come, it's like it's really almost like a it's almost like a setup. Mm -hmm. Because when they come, I, I'll give you a good example. No, we'll just use Accra. All right, so you come to Accra. Mm -hmm. And let's say you have a great experience with us. 
what in the alley you is, well, I'm trying to go to Joburg. Well, yeah. I know some people in Joburg mm. that could take great care of you. And now you have now you have two great experiences versus man, I tried to find those so and so online. Yeah, well, and that, I went and then well, I that went, online man, killing people. Oh, well, that online. <laughs> and you know somebody over there. Now you got dealing with little so and so. Little so and so trying to get at you. All this, you know. See, that's a whole, that's a whole other, <laughs> that's a whole yeah. other story. But it's, it's like you gotta just invest in yourself. You work too hard. Uh, time. We we are learning that time does not wait for anyone. We can be gone at any point in time. Yeah. Be, just like that, we're gone. We're talking about bucket list. I'm gonna get to Africa one day. On the bucket list one day. I'll, I'm gonna come in 2025. It, 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 it's already written that you're not gonna be here in 2025. Yeah, you just don't know it. But, right. You don't know it. Oh, we don't know. We don't know when the time yeah. is. That's what, and that's what I decided. I said after 2018. Mm -hmm. I said I'm not waiting anymore. And that's why people are, man, you going on? I said, yeah, because you just don't know. I might be here one day or 50 years. I don't yeah. know. But however much time it is, I'm gonna make the most of it and hopefully inspire other people to do the same thing. And that's what you and Natasha are doing here mm -hmm. in South Africa. And and that's what other, you know, that's, when you see this, it, this is a movement that has started. And it's not yeah. a cliche movement, this yeah. is real. It's not a moment either. It's, it's, it's a not movement. a movement, it's not yeah. a moment, it's a yeah. movement. You can look at the videos uh, on your channel and see yeah. all of the different testimonials and what how people have had their experiences. And, and that, the people tell you, you know we're not gonna get on there live. You know yeah. we, uh, our folks, yeah. Black folks in America yeah. not gonna get on camera and set up there and lie for you. You know, they're yeah. not gonna do it. You know, so it, people will tell you and you can feel it from the people. And what we want is for you to be able to have that experience. And what I want you to do is when you come to South Africa, come with them. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. I am telling you. So that I put my I put my company, he's, my reputation he's, on the He's line. done it. He's done it, y'all. <laughs> now don't go out and do that. <laughs> now, now, now we're going to mess it up. <laughs> but now, it's all good. It's all good. So hopefully we'll, we'll see you guys. And, and as we say here in sunny South Africa, um, we have great packages that are that, that are set up on our on our website. So just select a, select one of the packages. Um, if you need to schedule a call, you can uh, you can call us. Um, we got I know I know on our on our stuff we got payment plans set up. Um, for you guys as well. So if you if you need a payment plan, um, there's an option there as you're checking out to to to, to you know to do that. Um, um, and and it works. Most people that we have brought here came on a payment plan, um, and so we do that because we want to make sure that you have that option to come to South Africa. So we will see you here in sunny South Africa. So now we're going to talk about what you should actually expect on this trip. What you should expect is what the real South Africa always deliver, which is luxury, couture, and lifestyle, which is going to be part of the whole experience. So you're going to go, obviously, to go and see the homes, but when you get picked up from the airport on those beautiful buses, you're going to get bused to your five-star location. From there, you're going to have access to amenities that you've never had before, nice restaurants, things to do right at your front door. After all of that, you're going to have the, op the opportunity to go to a five-star game lodge as well, and you'll be there for a couple of days, and that's all going to be included in your package. So let's talk about those package prices. So per person sharing, the price is $4,000, and if you're a person that wants a room to yourself, likes a little privacy, the cost is going to be $5,150. So if you have any other questions about that, you know how to reach us, info at therealsouthafrica.com, and we do look forward to seeing you here in sunny South Africa.
Thank you so much for spending time with us today. If you like what you saw, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the notifications button so you don't miss out on all things The Real South Africa. Thanks again.